The bell rings for lunch. You and your friend meet up at the table to coordinate on which game, what time, and server you're hopping onto after school, all while eating mini corn dogs at 9.30 a.m. You might also be failing math. I never really got to play online console games as a kid and was always out of the loop on what hot new thing was being talked about at recess. It seemed like I was generations behind with a lot of catching up to do. When the other kids were all about the new Call of Duty, I was always about Call of Donkey Kong Country and of course its beloved sequel, Circus Charlie. But if there was one way I could keep up, it was our shit ass, old beige PC we had at home. RuneScape. Toontown, UB Funkies, was fucking horrible. Neopets was poppin', Club Penguin was cool, the family computer couldn't run WoW. These games were my gateway into online multiplayer as they were free 99. With an overwhelming amount of choices, it's hard to pick what you wanted to play. And whichever game you picked for that afternoon with the boys, I sure hope you picked a good one, cause it's going to take six years to load in. But it never mattered how long you had to wait. The confines of youth, the lack of feeling like you're in charge of your own journey and your own decisions, any escape for freedom is exactly what every kid wants. Even if it's as a dog throwing pie at robots. And as a kid, nothing else matters more than what's happening right now at this very moment. At no other time was I more convinced that I actually was SPO333 doing epic spy shit. And this is driven over by the fact that you're playing with other kids across the world and maybe some adults that ask what time your parents go to work for some reason he just wants to come over and play mario it's okay i asked him there's such a beauty to the online games in this era because i grew up in this time frame and i am biased you're at the right meetup spot but your buddies aren't there because they hopped onto the wrong server is what i would tell myself restricted child-friendly chat options that make it harder to tell the boys this game fucking sucks, let's get on RuneScape. Games completely built on advertising, like Millsberry, where now you wonder how the fuck they sunk their big meaty claws in you in the first place. You could use in-game currency to get your very own GF. These traits are for the most part products of their time, and the marketing, word of mouth. And the games today are more streamlined than ever for kids. How can the classics keep up? But what if there are genuine reasons to still love them and reasons to revisit? What if it's still fun to hop on as an adult and laugh your ass off to the game's maybe now hindsight dumbass design? Or maybe it's a pleasant surprise with more layers than you thought. Unfortunately, the problem with online games is that they are online, so we don't always get that chance to find out. Not everyone can be top dog forever, and that's okay, right? It's not personal, it's generational. Wrong. I'm not the mouse. So when your game starts to sink down the ranks and revenue goes from fuck you money to still fuck you money, uh, it means companies will shut it down and close up shop. Sometimes you get cheap modernizations of the game that people didn't want in the first place, or the company just moving on like it never was. Whether you're a fan that was there the whole time that just wants to keep playing the game, or an old friend that wants to come back for a chat, there are no options. Unless you make them. So if the big dogs aren't gonna bring it back, why not do it yourself? With the internet today, any piece of media has the ability to create thriving communities out of thin air with people that just want to share knowledge and opinions with each other and or leak someone else's home address. <laughs> Passionate fan, what do you expect? This brings us to dedicated fan servers and archives. Uh, take Toontown and Club Penguin rewritten. No paid memberships, but with membership content, because why not? If they want us to ball, I won't decline. You get to play the game you remember. People can still tell you to kill yourself if you beat them on Toon Slingshot, and Mousefuck doesn't lose out on any cheese on the IP. So it's gotta be a win-win, right? Wrong, I still don't make any of the decisions here. Games being shut down is upsetting, but you understand and come to terms with it. What I don't understand is going a step further and taking down incredible, non-competitive, fan-made content. No one's stealing your bag, we just want to play your games. In the end, I'm just some guy. I make dumbass videos on the internet uh, about video games. I have no professional or corporate connections, and I hardly know what I'm talking about. So, naturally, I'm 100% right always, but I reminisce over the games I played in my childhood, and if given the chance, I would love to go back and 
goof around on them <laughs> without worrying if I even have access to them. I don't have a solution, maybe even a good point, but I do have love for this era of games I played as a kid. There's still art and they still deserve to be experienced. Anyways, that's all I got. Uh, thank you for making it to this point and listening to what I have to say. Uh, let me know what you played. I'd love to hear about it. And uh, I think I'm going to hop on Toontown Rewritten and <laughs> throw some freaking pies. You know, talk about freaking flower with the water squirter. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Take care. <laughs>